Hello everybody. Welcome to the studio. Today I'm going to be working with Lunar Paste by Simon Hurley and these are really, they're really great. They give so much dimension that uh, I just can't even tell you. It's, it's really great stuff. So let me just rattle off what I'm going to be using and then we'll get right to our work. I'm going to be using the Slippery When Wet, Traffic Cone, Bee Sting, Clear Skies, Leda Gata, and also be using Dina Wakeley's Scribbly Holiday Birdies 2 stamp. Then I'm going to be using also Ranger's Trending Hot stencil. That's right here. And a palette knife, a scraper. And these are all Ranger products. Craft sheet, black archival ink, a literate pen, black, and a toothpick. Now, um, all these things will be listed as well on the uh, site. So um, these are the cutest little birdies that uh, Dina has done. So um, I want to get those on here. So I'm going to start by doing something like this. And you can see the beautiful sheen of the lunar paste. It's beautiful. But not only that, the dimension is super thick. I'm not sure if you really can see it, but it really is pretty pretty amazing stuff. So I wanted to show you how to use it a different way than than uh, the, what most people are using. You know me, I'm always doing something different. Okay, so first I wanna do is just get my, st my stamp ready. And I'm just using the archival. And just get that bow in. Okay, and then I'm just gonna place, place it on the card. I think I'm going to put them a little lower so I can play with things and make things and change things. And I never know what I'm going to do until I start doing it because I, I, I want things to be very creative. Now, see how parts of it didn't show up? Doesn't matter. I kind of like that. I can mess around with it later. It might be behind flowers. Who knows? So let's get busy. So I'm going to use a palette knife and I'm going to use a, um, a brush. I'm going to use actually the the brush first and I'm also using the craft sheet this is the ranger craft sheet which is to me the best invention ever because I can use it as a palette and I just put a little out at a time and just cover this up like that I don't have to put it all away and I just dance it on top like I'm painting because I like an undertone of color and so I'm just kind of throwing that on there kind of jab jibber jab on it and you can see how it really it's nice and opaque and it really adds a beautiful sheen I really like it a lot. And uh, I can see where you could use this in so many applications, but just for now, this is just one. So I put that on fairly thin because this is like my first layer. You know how I like to work with layers, but they're not hot, they're just layers. Just another layer of paint. Now I'm gonna go into some of the, um, I think they call this traffic cone. And it's kind of an orange color and I'm just gonna go in and put a little dab of that out. So I want this little chickadee here to look really cute, a little bluebird or whatever you want to have. If you like one color more than another, then that's what you use. But I like to go into the darker area, which would be under the wing and put a little of this darker color on. But again, I'm using it rather thickly. And cause you want that impesto feeling. It gives like a little feathery feel to the bird. It's kind of cute. And I'll even put some behind where the wings are out, because that makes it go around the corner when it's a little darker back here. You can always come back and uh, add more and add more and add more. It's just a matter of what you want. But I like a nice thin coat to begin with, and then, like, like I say, come back and um, jazz things up. Now I'm gonna go into a little of the, the um, clear sky. Take a little of that and put that down because I like my colors to blend a little bit. And it's really easy, because well, this dries pretty quickly. So you can just take a little of that color and put a little of the blue in there and give it a little flavor. See how you can add a little tint? How much, isn't that so beautiful? I might put a little bit back here, because cool colors recede, warm colors come forward. And it just adds a little sparkle to them. If you want more color, you add more color. You want less color, you do what you love. I give you permission. I think that's all I ever needed was a little bit of permission. 
So I just give you a little of that. Okay, so that looks really beautiful. Now I just wipe out my brush and to clean your brush, all you need is water. So I'm gonna go a little bit more into the, I'm gonna say the orange color, which is traffic jam. And I'm just gonna add more texture and add a little more in here and a little more over here. Anywhere where it's receding, I'm going a little darker. That's all. You can go over colors and it will cover them. See how it's like translucent in a sense? You can see through it a little bit if you go thin. If you go thick, you don't see through it. So I'm just gonna go a little thicker because I want some texture. And I especially want texture up by his head a little bit because that's my center of interest. Maybe even a little bit around his beak area a little bit. Don't forget, I can always go over. So let's say you went, you don't like something you did. All you do is go over it and it's not a big deal. All right, that looks really pretty. Now I'm gonna go into a little of the red color, Bee Sting. And I only put, take out a little bit at a time and put it on the side on that craft sheet. It is so easy to do this and you don't have to pull out a palette. The craft sheet is amazing. Uh, you can see this is well loved, but I always use it and it's like an old friend. Now I'm going even darker on the, the areas that are further away. Do you see how that pops out a little bit more? Because it's a darker value. And I can always add more color, less color. It's just a matter of what I want. So I'm just kind of going a little darker and a little darker here and a little darker underneath the wing. I want it to pop out and maybe bring that dirty brush down underneath and bring it under this wing. It just gives more dimension. And that's the thing about the lunar paste. It gives you so much dimension. It's, it's really pretty amazing. So I'm gonna go a little bit thicker back here. Make, I almost use that um, stamp as just a uh, reference. And then I can go around it later with a little bit of uh, the literate pen. And I'll show you that in a minute. But I just want to darken under here a little bit. So everybody knows he has a neck. All right, that's good. Now I'm going to go back into the orange and kind of tap that in to the traffic jam. Look how cute that is. And I have a little bucket of water here to keep my brush clean. I just wipe it out. And now I'm gonna go back into the slippery when wet. Put a little of that out, which is a yellow. And now I wanna start building again. So here's my second layer. So basically you just layer as you wish. And I like my bird to have a little bit of more texture in his breast area. So now I'm getting thicker. I mean, you can actually get a nice load on there and get very thick where you want it lit. And it gives more dimension. And I'm just tapping around a little bit on the face, around the eyes. And it looks pretty nice. Now the beak, I might just do a little mix of the yellow with the red. And just put a little hit there. Actually, I'm thinking uh, I might like a little more yellow. So I'm going to go use that mix that's on my brush and just kind of soften and darken back here a little bit. So you can mix this as well. Don't be afraid to try things because that's when you're going to make the biggest magic. Okay, so that looks really nice. So now what I want to do is make that beat come out. So I'm going to use that Traffic Jam Cola. And I'm just going to Put it on pretty thick. So I'm just gonna do it on the paper here so you can see how thick that is. And I'm just gonna take it on the tip of the brush and just put it on there. So now I'm getting lots of dimension. Now after that dries, I can do it again. So don't be afraid that, oh, that didn't come out the way you wanted. it. You do it in layers, like everything else I do. Everything's layers. Okay, so now I, I, I kind of would like some flowers, so. Uh, I can even do, take that thick little blobs and make little beautiful flowers. And all you have to do is touch and touch. And I like it thick, so I'm gonna go and get some more of the, uh, I'm gonna take out my palette knife and pull out a little bit because I want it to be thick. Now you can use a palette knife with this or, um, I'm gonna use that for something else today. 
but I'm gonna use the brush. I really like the brush and I like a nice big thick glob. It makes for a beautiful little flower. And all you have to do is put three little hits down, see, or three or four. Flowers tend to be, it depends if they're sideways, you know, if they're sideways, you go sideways. But the trick is get a nice glob on there. You can always come back and add more if you want and use that as a base, see? So let's add a little more flowers. And I really want it thick. I mean, that's what's so magical about this. And maybe just a little sideways one there. And I want you to come look up at this bird, so I need to put a, maybe a bigger one up here. And we're just putting blobs down. You can make a blob. I know you can make a blob. Your kids can make a blob. And just kind of thicken it up. It looks really cute. And like I said, you can come back and make it thicker. You can make it go off the paper. It makes it look bigger. Just touch it and pull up and you get a bigger, thicker load. That looks really nice. Let's put a little one over here. I think that looks really cute. So here's a really quick and easy little project and um, you can use it for a birthday card. You could use it for, you know, when you're going to visit somebody and you just want to give them a little something. These are so sweet and there's so much texture to them. They're interesting and fun. So I'm just gonna put a little red back here, a little thicker, thicker. Okay, so I'm gonna let that sit a minute. I might go to a toothpick. No. I'm using some slippery when wet and putting little dots of yellow in the centers with a toothpick. Now don't put too much out at a time because it will dry fairly fast depending on your weather, of course. This is just about dried. Put that one there, I think I can get it. And I roll my toothpick and it really comes off quite nicely. Just roll it, there you go. Look how cute that is. So I'm gonna show you how, how to make other things, but I want this to rest and dry before I outline it and do more things. So we're gonna put this aside. And basically this is what we're doing to give you an idea. So we'll put that aside for now. Now I wanna do is a hat. It is Valentine's time of year. So let's uh, get that brush again. And let's just outline a hat. And all I'm going to do is just make a hat. I want to make a nice big hat because I want to use a stencil on it. And I like it to be a little different. Don't, it doesn't have to be perfect. I like it to be like high on one side, maybe low on another side. Makes it more interesting, don't you think? And this just gives me my area to work in. And then I just scribble. Because right now all I'm doing is putting that base down. I like the little areas of brown showing through, so don't try and cover everything up. You might like it like that. Okay, that looks really good. Okay, so now what I want to do is go into my trending hats, and I want to put it on an angle. I think I'll do, the, do it this way. A little interesting. And I'm gonna go into a little of the slippery when wet and I'm gonna take a little of that color, take a glob of it and put it on there, but only on about approximately half. And I don't care if it kind of comes off the edges cause I'm looking for a grungier look at this point. So I just know that I want it at least covered up into the hat, but I don't care if it goes over. If it goes over, it doesn't matter. Now you say, oh, you get so much you wasted it. Well, not really, because I put this back in the container. And I can just come back carefully and just cover, make sure I'm covered all the red off that I can see. That looks good. And now I'll take the extra and put that in, back in the container and cover that up. Okay, let's get the reveal. That's lovely. Now, what I do with this is I put it right into my bucket of water. Okay, now that I got my hat on here, and I love these little pieces coming off. 
Don't you think that's really cool? Look, at you can almost see a little hat there. I love it. I, lo I love it a little grungy like this. Now what I want to do is turn this sideways and take a toothpick and just pull little lines across. And just make little scratches. If you want, you can use some more of your your paste. In fact, what I wanted to show you this is this is why I love the craft sheet so much. You can just scrape it up and you're done and you get to put your next load on there. So don't worry about that's why I love the craft sheet. I'm going to get some more of that slippery when wet. So now what I want to do is turn this this way and just pull little lines across. And it kind of like it's a nice abstract, I think, and it's it's beautiful. You could you could do this on another surface and make it like on watercolor paper or something and actually have a beautiful painting. Okay, now I'm going to go sit back into that red and pull some of those in here. Cuz this is all about texture. It's lunar texture paste. It's amazing stuff. Look at this. Look how abstract and beautiful that is. It has a beautiful freeform feel. I love it. Let's turn it again to see how we look. Oh, that's looking really good. I love that. I love the horizontal with the verticalness of this going on, and I don't really want to touch that. Okay, so I like that a lot. I think I could use a little more yellow. Maybe in between here. You see how you can keep doing the layers? And then don't worry if it mixes, it's kind of nice. Look at that. And the more layers you put on, the, the better it looks, I mean, really. And if you end up not liking something, you can just come back with more red and just put a little more red back in. It's not hard to do, and it really looks beautiful. I just want to connect that area. I think it would look better there. So that looks pretty nice. I really like it. So that's another technique. And here's one I did kind of like that on another surface with a black to give you an idea. Now you can always cut these out as well and put them in other items and uh, for dimensional pieces. But oh my God, that looks so beautiful. Let's just bend that back while it's drying. So I'm gonna put this aside and we can work on it more later if we wish. So I'm gonna use another craft sheet and I'm thinking of showing you how to make these beautiful bumblebees and roses. So let's make a rose. Let's just talk about it for a minute. First, I start with a blob. Then I kind of pull little strands out, but alternating. You don't have them, see how they're, they're alternating. They're not all a circle. You can do a circle as well, but in this case, we're doing it this way. Then after I scratch into it, and then I get all that beautiful texture and I can add more texture to it. The bumblebee is a blob, a pill-shaped blob. Then I go back and I pull out the wings and a little antenna if you wish. And then I come back with the letterit pen and do my detail work. So let's make some flowers and some bees. Okay, let's start with the bee because I got the yellow on my table here. So I'm gonna make a pill shape with the bee. So I'm gonna make them big so you can see really easily. And I'm gonna make a really big bee. And look how thick and beautiful this Paste is. I mean, I really like it a lot. I'm going to get more. I want my B kind of big just so you can really see how I do it easily. Okay, we're going to make a big old bumblebee. And here we go. So if you can make a pill shape, you can do that, right? You can make an oval. Anybody can make an oval. Your kids can make an oval. Okay, so this is a real fun project to do with your kids. And they make beautiful, like I said, accessories for cards or just leave it this way. You can also pick at it like this. Touch, pull, touch, pull, touch, pull. And it gives that fuzzy feel to the bumblebee. And that's the magic of the lunar paste. I want it to be a little bit like that, but not a lot. I scrape off into my container and close that up. Now I'm going to take a toothpick. 
and just kind of like texturize it, but not so deep. I want it a little shallower. So I'm just kind of shaping out my bumblebee pill shape and just kind of softening the texture just so it isn't too harsh because bumblebees are really fuzzy. They're not really, you know, they're not really pointy. And so I want my tips of my texture to be kind of rounded a little bit more, a little softer. So I'm just kind of moving it around and it's gonna take a while for it to dry. Not too long, but it'll take a bit. I just want it big enough so you can see. So I'm just gonna move that around. And maybe pull out a little antenna. And sometimes I have to wipe off my, my little toothpick so I can make and just keep tapping. I can make a little wing coming off a little bit. But I'm gonna do a lot with the uh, letterate pen to give me more texture and more, I mean more um, definition. So I'm not really worried right now. I just wanna make little legs. Maybe all they are is a, a funny looking V or check mark actually. Looks more like a check mark. Try to find the easiest ways to, to see things, because when you do, you can do anything. Okay, that looks really cute. I got a little dabble on the end. I'm gonna make that glob go right on the edge. Yeah, that looks good. You can steal from where you're working, get a little glob on there, and you add more to your antennas. And that's good enough. Okay, so now I just wanna knock off some of the tops. Just kind of knock it off a little bit. And look how thick and fluffy he is. He looks really great. He's a little bee stinger in the end. You know, let's face it, everybody loves that stinger. Okay, so that's him. We're gonna let him rest for a while to dry and then we'll come back and do our next layer. You can also, just to let you know, you can come back with that toothpick and scratch off any areas, but we're gonna define them with the letterate pen. Okay, so now let's do the rose. And I'm gonna use the uh, traffic jam. So let's put that on here, my palette, which is the craft sheet. Cover that up. Now I'd like to thin it out like that and then wipe out the brush, well, the, the knife pretty well, and then cut a little line in it. You get a little bead and now you can draw a little centers and things. So we, I actually, I should put a little center in first. Okay, there's my center, big old blob. I never do anything the same way twice. So I get my little bead again and I just kind of go around and I'm not looking for perfect because if it is, it won't look as good. You're better off being not so perfect and just keep coming around. Turn your paper if you want, get rid of that for now. Get another little bead, come inside that area so it's alternating. I want the ones on the outside to be very big, so that's gonna go out a little further, okay? And then kinda go in there, and I keep turning, getting that little bead. They're gonna be a little smaller in here. And I can keep adjusting as well. but I know that I know what I want the outside ones to be a lot bigger. And we'll just put another little bead there. So all you have to do is alternate. You can do alternating lines, right? And you can turn your paper. You can even make some come in. So sometimes some will go sideways but they do go sideways. They're not always perfect, it's nature. The roses also have little pointy edges on some of their leaves, so petals. So you can do little points if that helps you. And I just keep working my way around and I might put a point there. And look at, you can already see the rose appear and I'm gonna have it cut off the paper because it's more interesting. And I'll have it kind of come over this way. So it's alternating. 
it's going to be bigger in the front and shorter in the back. So just put a little line there, a little more glob here. And so I got my rows basically on there, which is basically this. So depending on what size, this is huge, but I wanted it huge so you can see it well. So, okay, now I'm going to put that in the water. I'm going to take my toothpick and just touch and pull the rose petals inward towards the center. And I want to do the outlines, outside ones kind of first because, and I'll tell you why, because this stuff will dry fairly fast. So it's a glob in the middle. It's going to last a while. So I know that the edges won't last as long. And I do like that big edge trim on it, the thickness. So you can always come back and add more though. And just pull, just pull. And you don't have to connect anything. You're giving it an impression. You're turning into an impressionist painter. I'm just kind of twirling that. Maybe have it come out a little bit more. A little thicker there. Pull. You can use the tip of the, the pointy part of your toothpick and really get a nice points. Tickle them, pull them in. So now in here, I'm gonna go in the middle and just start swirling like a soup, but in a spiral and just kind of like twirl the toothpick. That helps. And turn your paper if it helps. And just pull. And you'll get a beautiful center. And you can come inside of this area now and add more petals. It's up to you. It looks good just the way it is. But if you want more petals, you just add more petals. How about one alternating one right in between? And look how beautiful that is. And I might like to thicken one up here. So you see how you can use the learner paste. You can really use it thick. And that's what's, to me, is so magical about it because it really holds. It doesn't melt back down. It stays very thick. And pull that in here a little thicker. So you can see how I layer more and more. And then I'm just gonna pull this one down a little bit. So there's your beautiful little rose. So you can see how easy this is. It's just take your time and have fun with it. Cause if you're having fun, you're gonna do such a great job. And all you're doing is spirals. That's it, there's nothing more to it. Now this is gonna have to dry for a bit. Uh, so we're just going to put this aside for a minute. Let's go back to our chickadee. I'm not calling it a chickadee, even though it isn't, but it kind of, I don't know why, it just reminds me of a chickadee. But anyway, just because he's fat and cute. <laughs> so anyway, I'm scraping my dip palette off again, my craft sheet. And this stuff is actually probably could be used in other craft projects, <laughs> to be honest with you. I'm big on mixed media, so that would be really fun. What I wanna do now is add some flowers, um, some some greenery. Okay, so now I'm gonna take out a little of that later gator, put that on this side, which is a green. And then I'm gonna take a toothpick, and put that in the water. And I'm just gonna just Put a little blob down and pull. And voila, little little leaves. You can pull a line. You don't have to get real defined. It's just little blobs. But the trick on a leaf, which I've told you before, is make sure there's a point on it. If there, You can put a little blob down and put a point on it. It becomes a leaf, right? So don't overthink it. Just a blob, point. Put a point on it. Didn't get a point, add more of a point. It's up to you. I'm gonna put it over here, a blob, and pull a point. Sometimes I like to uh, clean off that tip, grab some more. But the big trick on this is sometimes make some bigger. So let's make a bigger one right here. And another big one there. And all I'm doing is laying blobs. 
you can lay a blob. It's like, it's like laying a blob. That's it. Okay, so now what do I do? I'm making points. So I want this blob to come out this way. Maybe this one pointing to the bird. That's a good composition. But I want it thick. I want it to feel like there's actual petals. I mean, leaves. Make sure there's a point on it. Pull a line coming down if you want. If that helps you. And then pull a leaf this way. So you can have as many little leaves as you want or as few as you want. It's just a matter of what you like. I'm just gonna, that one's a little thick, so I'll just knock off the top, that's all. But you can see how this grows. So I'm not gonna make a million of them because I think you get the idea. But you can just kind of like throw a bunch of blobs down. Even just trying to use the side of your toothpick. And it gives a different feel to it. But you see how cute that is? Look at that, that's adorable. Okay, so now what I wanna do is, it, this one needs a little bit up here. So what I wanna do is, I want it to point to my little bird. Cause if it points to the bird, it's a good composition and it makes you look where I want you to look. And so I'm throwing a blob on there. If it isn't blobby enough, I just go with a little thicker. Pull them on the side. Some are big, some are small. It doesn't matter. But what matters is it's coming to the bird. So I'm gonna point that a little more this way. Actually, I can bring it right into the birdie. It would look really pretty. That looks good. Look how sweet that is. I think that's adorable. But look at how thick this paste is. And you get quite a bit. I mean, you can be very generous when you're doing this because they give you quite a bit in a jar. And it's really awesome. And now I'm just gonna take a tip of my, and add dots. Dimensional dots. Everybody likes dots. Okay, so now this has to dry again, of course, but it doesn't take that long. Okay, let's put this aside. But can you see the depth and the thickness? I'm gonna put this on the side. I hope you can see it. I'm not really oh, sure. Let me see if I can stand up and see this better. You can see the thickness. It really is dimensional. It's really beautiful. I gotta tell you, it's, it's so much more beautiful in real life. It's, this is just stunning. Okay, so let's go do uh, another project. Let's go back over here and see if we're dry. Yeah, we're pretty dry. Okay, so now what I wanna do on this one is add a little glitz or a little, little something around the edge. I think I would like my brush. I would like a little green just to break up some of this red and just as a tint. So I'm gonna thin, thin amount on my brush and just pull. So you can see how you can go over and, and then you can even have a spray if you wanted to. Where you turn it upside down and just kind of smudge the edges a little bit because it's green and look how thin you can go with this. So in other words, you can use this as many ways. You're not limited to just the, the thick. So I'm just gonna dance this around just to give it a little more oomph. I like the little bit of green flavor in here, just here and there. Green is the opposite of the red, so it really makes the red of the hat pop out. And it's very beautiful. I mean, if you put this in a frame, this would look just like a beautiful art piece. Let's make a leaf on this. Let's make a big leaf, just so you can see how to do a big leaf. I'm taking that big blob, and I'm gonna put it right here. I mean, this time I'm using the brush. So I'm going thick, I'm going around, and all it is is a blob, right, a round circle with a point. 
Does that look like a leaf? I think it does. And I know you can do this. And you can bring it right into your little rose. And this rose should be just about dry. And I can have another little leaf coming out this way. So you can have thin leaves if you wanted to. And then thicker leaves, which gives it even more dimension. You can pull a little vein. You can make it thicker in the middle, thinner on the backside. Look how nice that is. You get so many options. Okay, let's make another one down here. Here's a thin one, just a thin little leaf. And let's say you changed your mind, you want it thick. You just come back and put it in a little thicker. Here, I'll get a little bit more. Actually, I can steal because I have quite a bit on this one. So I think I'd like it a little thinner towards the plant. And now see how easy it is to add another layer. And a brush gives it a nice soft look in comparison to a, you know, the prickery look. And just give it an edge. I like the edge. And there we go. So you can see how easy it is. A blob with a point, you get a leaf. That's all there is to it. Now let me see, I think this might be still a little wet, so I'm gonna put this aside and I'm gonna bring back our birdie. Okay, so now I'm gonna do some outlining. Now he's pretty dry, so I'm gonna outline the bird with my letterit pen. And I love these letterit pens, I gotta tell you. And any where I want it to be really defined, I can go right over it. It also goes over the lunar paste. So you can go over anything you want. You can make the beak a little bit more pronounced. You can even put a little more dark on the eyeball and outline his head a little bit. But keep it sketchy. It's kind of very, it goes with the whole feel of the uh, painting. It's more of a sketchy art. It's more of an impressionist art. Not, maybe like his feet a little bit more. And then I can even outline some of the flowers, you know. But they're a little damp still, so I think I'll wait. But I can make little sticks, little stems. So we'll put him aside. I think he, need, he still needs to dry a little bit. Now that's all dry, so I can just start outlining it a little bit just to give it a little more dimension. But you don't have to. It's just a matter of what you're looking for. And I keep it sketchy. I don't like I really try to keep it perfect. I can even come back and smush some more if I want. Just sketch. and just sketch it on. Okay. And I'm just gonna go around this green one. And it's still wet, so we'll leave it be. Okay, so let that dry. We'll come back. In okay, a everything's dry now, and I'm ready to finish up my tags. So I'm just gonna outline now with my letter it pen which i love and i'm picking and choosing where i want my outlines to be and just giving it a little more dimension i also want to add that i'm going to um i want to antique the tags so uh i will add some uh archival coffee inks uh as an antiquing so i just wanted to say that because I just decided it. Okay, so that looks really good. I really like it. I want a little outline on this little petal. A little outline there. And it really gives it a little more dimension. You don't have to outline it. It look, really looked good the other way. Um, if you didn't want to outline it, you could also do just uh, antiquing the inside as well. But, or antique the tag itself and then come back. But you see how pretty that is? It really, really is. Uh, has a nice Victorian feel to it. So I like it. I think it's beautiful. I want to outline that so it really stands out a little bit. Okay, so now what I want to do is work on my bumblebee. So what I'm going to do is I get a little wing there. Just give it a little feeling of a wing. 
and I'm going to outline its little antennas and its little check mark for a leg. I'm going to give it a little black color in its head. And then I'm going to give it a little color, outline them a little bit. And now I'm going to make my little lines on him, antique the bottom a little bit so he looks, you know, a little shadowed. You could even do the legs just with your letter and pen if you wanted to. It's up to you. I'm just going to kind of paint over him. I want him to have a little feeling like a wing. I'm going to turn this a little bit. just makes my life a little easier. And just kind of scribble. I don't want it perfect. I don't want stick on lips. <laughs> if you remember the blondes in the old commercials, I, I like it to be sketchy. And so it almost feels like it's flying. See what I mean? Rather than stationary. I'm going to darken his little stinger. You could even come out with a longer stinger if you wanted to. And he's really adorable. I got to tell you, people love bees. I paint them all the time and uh, I've taught them so many times and it really enhances your artwork. And people just love a little life in the painting, you know? And I'm just going to darken over here. And this letter of pen works really great. And look at that. If you wanted to, you could even put a line. That's what's so good about the lunar paste is you can go over it with other mediums. And look at that. That is, that's adorable. I mean, who wouldn't want that? I want it. I think I'll give it to myself. And now I'm going to go back to my little birdie. And I'm going to little outline some of his leaves. And flowers, just so you can see the difference. Where it's, if it's outlined, you can even outline the little inner leaf, the little bud thing. What do you call it? Centers, the little centers. Oh, it's hard to paint and talk at the same time. A little leaf, maybe put a center in that. A little leaf out there. A little center here. I might even darken underneath the shadowed area of the bird's eyeball. A little bit more. Put a little leaf there. Center. So look how, how pretty that is. So it looks good like that. I wouldn't probably put the dark around the little dots because I think I like them as like almost like fairy dust. But um, I'll just give that a little heftiness to his little foot. And so I, I like it both ways. So personally, I'll probably finish it this way just because it's the, uh, you know, consistent. But you don't have to is what I'm trying to get at. So I'm going to put this one aside. I'm going to go to this one here. And I do want to define the, the outside of this a little bit. And put a little bit of a line around it, just a little. And just bring it in here, just let it sketch. And I'm going around some of the color. You don't have to, you could go over it all if you wanted to. It's just a matter of what you like, but I like it sketchy. Look how cute that is. And it looked good the way it was, but when I antique it, it'll look even nicer. Okay, so that's why I decided to antique. Okay. Also want to let you know the letter it pens come in different colors. So, you know, and the point is so fine point on it that you can really control things. If you wanted to, you could even come in here. I, I mean, I'm not gonna do, probably wouldn't do it, but I want to just show you that you can outline each heart or maybe some of the hearts and not all the hearts, maybe just an edge. How cool is that? And that may be just right here. Just a piece of it. It's kind of interesting to do things that aren't consistent. It's hard. For some reason, our bodies want to be so consistent, but it actually, when you're not, it's even more interesting and people love it even more. 
maybe just a point on this one and not the whole thing. You see what I mean? It really adds a different look. You could even come back onto these and just on certain ones, bring a sketchy line underneath. You don't, like I said, you don't have to do that, but hey, it makes it interesting, doesn't it? It needs a little something here if I do it there. It needs a little something. And plus it joins it a little bit, which I think is really nice. So that looks really good. Now I wanna do some antiquing, like I said. So I have, uh, I like to use like, sepia or coffee or one of those nice dark colors and i'm going to take a ink applicator and antique the edge and this adds so much to your tags i mean they look nice the way they are but when you antique them it just gives them a little more body don't you think so so you can even also bring it up and in lightly, like a blush. And look how much prettier that is. And I just come and reload. And I, what I do is I, I put little circles in there. And just rub the edge. and just keep going around it. And then I soften back with what's left because it's not that damp now. And I um, can get a nice blush of a brown. And I like the brown with the brown tags. And look how pretty that is. That looks a lot nicer. I like it a lot. I can really keep working on it, of course. You know me, I'm always working on things. And then just go darker on this side. So you can play around with that all you want, but I wanted to show you how to antique a tag because it really looks, it adds so much to the tag. Let's do the next one. The same colors. You could use orange, you could use whatever you want. Just wanna antique this little puppy up real quick. and then just swirl it around and get a little antiquing going. You see the, how rich that looks in comparison to just the plain tag at the bottom? Like that. Let's darken the edge just by going over it. And that looks really nice. Right. Now there's very little left, so I can go around and antique the paper a little bit more. You could also do this first, but the thing is, is that um, sometimes you don't think it. <laughs> but it's like this adds so much more body to the painting than just a plain no, no uh, finish to the edge, you know what I mean? So I really like, and then I, like I said, as it dries, I go into it and just antique it. So you can do it either way. But I want to show you how lovely these look when they're antiqued. So you can get um, archival ink from Ranger, and it comes in so many colors, and you can do so much. Now the corners, I really like to darken the corners. Do you see how that really brings you into the little bird? And just soften that. And voila, we get a beautiful, beautiful tag. I think it came out really nice. The same thing we can do it with this one. And I won't do the whole thing because I don't want you to be bored, but I want to show you how I can antique the middle. And I can just go on here and just antique it a little bit. And I'm just rubbing into my pad. and just putting a little bit of shadows here and there. You can get it right on the corner. Well, there's not really a corner, it's around, but you can go in between on the edge and just give it a little darkness here and there. So you can keep adding to it. And you never have to worry about too early, too late, all that, doesn't matter. 
and just kind of antique. It adds so much more dimension to the painting. Look at how pretty that is. What a pretty cut. I kind of like it all smudgy like that too, don't you? Just give it a little bit more. Maybe make one side a little darker than the other. The B really is beautiful. Now I could even go over this with some of the yellow on the edges. So don't be afraid to do new other things, but because of time, I can't do everything, but I really did want to antique that. I think it makes it look so much nicer. So the dimension is fabulous, as you can see on that tag. The B is huge, and look at the dimension on that. On the rose, it's so pretty. But it looks really nice, the texture. I love it very much. You could make any sentiment, a happy birthday, whatever you want, but it's so pretty and it has, it's engaging because of the dimension. So, so I'm loving this lunar paste. I hope you give it a try very soon because you're gonna love it too. And learning how to do flowers and let's face it, that was very easy. You can do it. Here's what, another one I did. This one I just took the uh, palette knife and just poked at it up and down and made these beautiful textures. So anyway, I hope you try it. Let me know if you uh, have any questions and if you need any help. And uh, I hope you post what you do sometimes out there. I'd love to see your artwork. And so till next time, happy painting, everybody. Bye.